Okay, it's the 29th of March, 6.45 a.m., Monday morning. Now I'm going to pick this report up from where I left off yesterday, which was after the heavy lifting I did for about 30 minutes or 45 minutes, and I shot my blood sugar up, and <clears throat> I, uh, I was at 114, um, but I'm not going to go back that far. Um, it was dropping. It's, it has been it had been dropping for the hour after that and at 11:39 I was at a hundred I drop all the way to 78 at 110 so uh, how much is that 90 minutes so I drop all the way to 78 um, in this time I also step out and um, gather what I you know what I uh, would eat. Um, so it's basically it just took me a few minutes and it really didn't change my blood sugar because it was basically very light work it's like walking around which I do all the time so I eat a fish and wild greens salad um, basically and it is a lot of it and peanuts a lot of it and my blood sugar at, uh, I start eating at 110 and I think I finish eating I was 78 at 110 and I finish eating about 130 and I'm 84 at, at 135 <clears throat> and then back to 77 76 78 78 78 79 at 241 an hour plus after I finish eating my blood sugar is back to <clears throat> where it originally was Possibly because the insulin is coming up right in sync with all the carbs from the peanuts. Really, the only carbs in it were from the peanuts, probably. And they are they don't have much carbs. Um, but the veggies have very few digestible carbs. They are all greens. They are all wild greens. And they, you know, it was 160 or so grams of it. I don't think it had more than 5 grams of digestible carbs in it. So then I get to 81 at 304, 83 at 309, and 84 at 310, 85 at 312, 87 at 315, and uh, 84 at 322. Around that time, I decide to take a nap, and I, I am actually in bed measuring some of these last couple of things. So at 3.22, I was 84. So how did it go up from 3.04 to 3.22, uh, 2.41 to 3.22, from 79 to 84? I mean, it's not a big rise, but 77 is the prior one, 2.33. And at the highest was 315, I was 87, 10 points. That could have been just the peanuts, but it's also possible that when you have protein and you need the protein because I've you know done a workout about three hours earlier and it's you know you've damaged, so I worked out fasted. And I stayed fasted for more than two hours. Essentially, the demand for protein is extremely high. And your body has a very good methodology by which it prioritizes protein, especially if you're insulin sensitive and you have created a demand for the protein. So I think the insulin, which is also responsible for transport of protein, I think the insulin prioritizes protein because your body's demand for protein is much higher so it ignores the carbs for a little bit besides it's only 87 it's nowhere near danger for danger of being too high so your body just ignores the uh, carbs as long as they are not too high and moves protein that's my thought anyway i go to sleep at 322 I wake up at 4.36 and, well, I kind of wake up a little bit at 4.36. I go back to sleep after that too. Uh, 69, much lower than anything else. And then um, a few minutes later, I'm 
74 and then I go back to sleep. I wake up at 60 at 526 and now I am feeling nice and awake. I, I do get up and I walk around, do a few activities, uh, immediately 75 and I stay in the high 60s, low 70s all the way to dinner which is at around 10 o'clock because I ate breakfast, lunch at 2. So 10 o'clock and it's biryani. Lots of basmati rice, vegetables, uh, two eggs, um, and uh, I put a bunch of sprouts in mine, which really is not part of biryani. I just had the sprouts I needed to finish it. So 72 when I finish it, it takes a little while to hit, obviously, and there is a delay because it's not uh, in your bloodstream. 75, 76, 77, 82, 85. I, it rises all the way to 92, no, to, yeah, one, 110 at 11.16. So an hour and 15 minutes later. Oh, I also have a little piece of French toast from homemade, uh, homemade bread, which is a kind of a dense bread. Um, it just, like, you know, feels very cake-like and... So, yeah, and of course, it's sweetened. It has sugar and maple syrup. Uh, not much, I mean, because the whole piece was pretty small. But uh, so at 1.10, I go to sleep. Um, then the reading is 1.10. Time is 11.16. Um, 99 at 12.07. 84 at 104. 87 at 134. 82 at 234. 86 at 3.49. 105 at 444. I guess I got a dawn phenomenon for what I don't understand. Maybe the little bit of sucralose went in my liver. I don't know. It's 101 at 507. Basically, you know, 20 minutes plus later, it's still over 100. <clears throat> I start waking up at 507. I decide because there is something I need to do today at work. So I decided to get an early start. 98 at 512, but by now I'm moving around and, you know, doing all the wake-up things. 96, 97, 96. Uh, my last check was an hour ago at 90, um, at uh, 552. So let me check again. 96. Wow. <laughs> exactly the same. Let me check if I have checked in the middle. Oh, yeah, I've checked in the middle. Okay, at 604 I was 97. I was 97 at 608, 97 at 641, and 96 now. So, okay. So, what I think uh, I'm, you know, I'm trying to say is that protein gets prioritized. And if your blood sugar isn't super high, and you've created a demand for the protein by working out, and you're insulin sensitive, the, the prioritizing of the protein sort of, sort of lets the... And if you eat low carb... Um, Insulin comes up for the protein, from the protein, and it prioritizes protein. I have long felt that I, maybe this is proof that, you know, that I felt sleepy and at the same time my blood sugar rose a little when I really didn't have very much carbs in the, in the meal. Okay, so that's the video I have from yesterday.